We got to make sure the will is done. I want to do a check. I'm always here as your accountability partner. I want to make sure you got that will done. But yes or no, if you have your will updated, real quick here, because see, a lot of times, guys, we're so busy in life, we don't have anybody checking up on us to make sure we're getting our wills done. Make sure we get a life share, life insurance done. Making sure that um, we're keeping our resumes updated so we can make sure that we're getting skills to make ourselves more marketable in the job marketplace so that we can go out there and make more money so that we can go out there and make better investments or have the cash to make these investments in the stock market, in real estate, and in business. So real quick, guys, make sure you guys put it out there in the comments. What's up, Ashley? Look, let's get to see it. Linda Williams, no, didn't get it done. Get it done, Tisha. Tisha, come on now, Tisha. You should have it done by now. Marsha didn't get it done. That's what I'm talking about. James Dawkins got it done. Fantastic. Miss Johnson was a real sweet lady. She was about 63 years old. And every single month, guys, first of the month, about, I think it was close to about $300 in overdraft fees that she paid. And I reinstated into her account to help her out. Because I knew that she planted a seed in my mind that was going to grow over time. And now, guys, I'm sharing the story with you to hopefully inspire you guys to take in information that I'm going to share with you guys tonight about how the government keeps you broke. I want us to start to be thinkers. All right? I want us to be thinkers. We got to be outside of the box thinkers. Because understand this, guys. The difference between people who have money, the haves and the have-nots, is here. It's what's happening in the mindset. How many guys understand that? The difference between the people who have the money and the money, primarily, we know there's always exceptions, it's primarily what's going on up here. And the most powerful app that we own is our mind, our brains. See, I never got my brain developed financially all my life because my mom and dad, guess what? They was in survival mode trying to take care of me, my brother, our family. How many guys' family members were in the same mindset? How many guys right now, put in the comments, be honest, guys. Right now, you find yourself in survival mode. All right? You're just so busy with your day-to-day -day life. You're so busy with work. You're so busy with your kids or your spouse. And you just can't stop and get clarity around what you really need to do with your personal finances and investments so that you can really create the quality of life that you really, truly want to live. You see? How many of you guys have been there before? What's up, Chandra? Oh, it's Kevin. What's going on, Angelica? Good to see you as well. Cody, what's up, Cody? Good to see you. Hope you're being safe out there on the road. And typically, they will influence you by way of your company and marketing through television to get involved in these plans and you'll find yourself trapped in the situation. Probably 10 years later, or sometimes 20 years later, you'll start to realize that you don't have enough money saved for retirement. All right? How many guys want to be honest tonight? Real quick. I want to be real honest. I want to keep everything simple and plain. If you look at your account, if you have any type of retirement account, how many guys right now are on track when you look at your balance, all right, your balance, within the next, at least next five to seven, maybe 10 years, without a doubt, you know you're going to have a million dollars in that account. Put yes or no. Will you have a million? Yes. Or put no, you won't have a million in those accounts within the next five to seven years. All right? I'm going to break something down to you guys because I want you to understand that the government, guys, is not trying to get us to go to this next level financially. And it's a reason why a lot of us still struggle financially. We're not getting the knowledge. All right? Here's another question, which we all know, but I just want to remind people. We went to school, at least, most of us, for at least 12 years. At least 12 years. Y'all put yes or no in the comments. Did you learn anything about business, real estate, Stock market, taxes, loans. If you learn about these things in the school system, put yes. 
If you didn't learn anything about this in the school system, put no. And keep in mind, the government created the school system. Y'all put it out there. I want to see what we got. I see a lot of no's out there, Mrs. Smith. Connie, Yolanda Cooks. I see a lot of no's out there. Donnell Law. You see? Jamaica Lord, I see a lot of no's out there. All right? So we know what's going on. A lot of you guys are woke, are woke up here. Trissa, no. Dwight, Dasher, no. <laughs> Sweet Me, no. Tracy said no. See? We got to understand that these things are created by the government and intentionally so that we can keep, they want to keep us ignorant. All right? They want to keep us focused on going into debt, all right? You go buy a house, you're in debt. You go buy a car, you're in debt. You use credit cards, you're in debt. You go to school, you're in debt. How many guys got student loan debt? Put it real quick. Put yes if you got student loan debt. Put it in the comments real quick here if you got student loan debt. See, wouldn't it be nice if right before you went to college, someone gave you a quick course on student loans and how they really worked. I want you guys to really understand that this is intentional. They don't want to teach you about loans, student loans. They don't want to teach you that student loan is probably the worst form of debt that you could ever have if it's not used properly because you can't basically have this debt discharged during bankruptcy. You see? I know it. Cassandra Martin, I know it. Gregory, I know it. Rebecca Davenport, those, I know it. It's the worst we can have. How many guys understand that Social Security right now is having a major issue financially? And right now, if you go to your Social Security statement, I got to repeat this, guys. It's so important that we know this because nobody's talking about it at our jobs, our parents. Nobody really knows. Social Security is right now on the brink of bankruptcy. They're saying by the year 2033, they're not going to have enough money to pay people their full Social Security amounts. Imagine if you in your 40s, 20 years from now, where are you going to be? If you in your 30s, 20 years from now, where the Social Security system is going to be? It's not going to get better. And here's the reason why it's not going to get better, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all put a guess. How much debt do you think the government is in right now? How much debt do you think the government is in right now? Yes, case that keeping people lose about finances. It's a game, guys. It's a game. I'm going to show you how to play the right game so you can start winning. You can think big, guys, but you got to start small. All right? Those, those checks that you get from dividends, from your stocks, investments, maybe if you get a real estate and business, and business, they're going to start off very small. I don't care if you get a $10 check from the company, dividends, start small. Rental property, start small. But over time, it's going to snowball effect. It's going to have a snowball effect. And it's going to be it's called a wealth snowball. Instead of this whole debt snowball stuff, we got to be talking about the wealth snowball. You want to start small with some passive income stream and then slowly build that passive income stream over time. And then eventually you can give your boss walking papers. All right. That's what I did just a couple years ago, guys. I gave my boss a 10 minute notice. Everybody said, Chris, you need to give a two weeks notice. No, I had enough. I get tired of these companies. Some of those companies, guys, it could be a good company. You might work for it. But if you're not in a company that's not good to you financially, personally, and a good work-life balance and give you the hours to be able to have time for yourself and your family, you need to map out an exit strategy. And that's what I had to do as well. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm going to get into the Q&A. Don't be afraid to rock the boat. Don't be afraid to flip over the boat. All right? Because you know what I did? I blew the boat up. Okay? Ten minutes. I'm out. I ain't ever coming back. Because I don't want to be a part of this system. Because this system is not giving me time and money. Because every time I work for some corporation and I go get a promotion, guess what they take away from me? Time. 
And time is more valuable than money. I need my time back. I need to be a part of a plan, a system that's going to start small, but over time, I can get my time back so that I can get my health together. So I can spend more time with my lovely daughter and my lovely wife. Because that's what, what really matters. Time with my family. Time doing any type of volunteer work that I want to do. That's what you guys got to focus on. And that's what you got to build as well. All right? What's up, Desmond? 